three great Advent figures are, of course, the prophet Isaiah, John the Baptist, and Our Lady. But today I want to share some thoughts with you about another figure who, with characteristic humility, is behind the scenes of the unfolding events of salvation. I'm talking, of course, about Saint Joseph, the husband of Mary, uh, the Blessed Virgin, and the one whom we often turn to for prayer. 150 years ago now, Blessed Pope Pius IX established Saint Joseph as the patron of the Catholic Church. And it's good that the Church honours Joseph in this way. To celebrate the anniversary of that moment, Pope Francis has called for a special year dedicated to Saint Joseph beginning on the 8th of December 2020 and finishing on the 8th of December 2021. You may know that the Church often has these special years dedicated to a saint or to a particular aspect of the Church's mission. And the document which uh, is written by Pope Francis to establish this year is called Patris Cordis, uh, With a Father's Love. And I think that sums up so well, doesn't it, what St. Joseph is all about. He had a father's love towards our Lord and he has a father's love towards us in the church today. In fact, all four Gospels speak of Jesus as the son of Joseph. That's how he was known amongst his contemporaries. Of course, as we know through faith, Joseph was not the biological father of our Lord, but Jesus is still obedient to him as a child is to his father. St. Luke tells us that at the end of the infancy narratives that Jesus went to Nazareth with Mary and Joseph and uh, as the Gospel puts it, he was subject to them. So the Church has always held St. Joseph in great affection. Some of the saints, in particular Teresa of Avila for example, uh, she had a great devotion to Saint Joseph and she often asked Joseph to intercede for her, especially at the difficult times in her life. And when eventually she was able to establish her first community of discalced Carmelite nuns, she named the convent after Saint Joseph. She placed the community under his patronage. My first parish in a place called Whitnash, just on the edge of Leamington Spa, was dedicated to uh, Saint Joseph. And there you will find on the wall at the back of the church, a beautiful modern carving uh, by Walter Ritchie of the flight into Egypt. And I often think about that carving because you see Joseph pulling the donkey with Mary and the child Jesus into uh, exile in Egypt. And you sense that the winds are, are blowing against him. He's having to pull against the tide, as it were, of the world around him. What a beautiful image of the church, perhaps in our own times, pulling against the tide of a society and culture uh, which is not always open to the gospel. And I chose to be ordained bishop earlier this year on the feast of Saint Joseph, the 19th of March, because Joseph, to my mind, is the perfect model of spiritual fatherhood. And I thought that's what my Episcopal mission is really about, being a spiritual father here in the Diocese of Northampton. Of course, the month of March is dedicated to St. Joseph, and traditionally Wednesday is a day when we seek Joseph's intercession. And Pope Francis, in his little document, Patris Cordis, with a father's love, speaks to us 
about the relationship between Saint Joseph and our Lord and says that Jesus sees in Joseph the tender love of God. Joseph models for Jesus the love that God has for his beloved son. And part of that tenderness, the Pope suggests, is because Joseph doubted his own ability to do the things God asked him to do. He puts it this way, the evil one makes us see and condemn our frailty, whereas the spirit brings it to light with tender love. Tenderness is the best way to touch the frailty within us. Pointing fingers and judging others are frequently signs of an inability to accept our own weaknesses, our own frailty. Joseph doesn't make a noise in the gospel. He is gentle and hidden, full of humility, and in so many ways a model for us, therefore, of how we should deal with the world today. Joseph was able to accept his own weaknesses and Pope Francis is sure this moulded the atmosphere of the life of the Holy Family. He puts it this way, Jesus teaches us that faith in God includes believing he can work even through our fears, our frailties and our weaknesses. He also teaches us that we must never be afraid to let the Lord steer our course. Again, I find those words so powerful in their simplicity and beautiful in their encouragement, enabling us to step out without fear and with trusting confidence in the Lord. Because at times we want to be in complete control and this year, the year of the coronavirus pandemic, has taught us that we are simply not in control. But God always sees the bigger picture. Joseph is a fine example because he accepted Mary unconditionally. He trusted in the angel's words and his life teaches us to accept rather than to explain. He was not resigned to the inevitable, but a very proactive person. His example can teach us to set aside all anger and disappointment and to embrace the way things are even when they do not turn out as we wish, not with mere resignation, but with hope and courage. And so we see in the Pope's words the depths of Joseph's spirituality, uh, a complete man of the desert, we might say, even though he lived in Nazareth, a man who had gone out into the wilderness to be before God, totally vulnerable, totally open to God's plan for his life. Joseph's approach to his relationship with God shows us that miracles can happen in our lives too. And as the Pope writes again, we are encouraged to accept and welcome others as they are without exception and to show special concern for the weak, for God chooses what is weak. That's a, a reference to St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, where the apostle talks about his own weakness and the weakness of the Christian who trusts in the Lord. So Pope Francis is sure that God used Joseph to achieve his purpose, and he is convinced that God can use us too, no matter how frail or weak we imagine ourselves to be. Finally, I want to refer to a little statue which is here behind me. It's the statue of Saint Joseph asleep. You know that he received God's revelation when he was asleep. And uh, this statue is much loved by Pope Francis. He has it on his desk and apparently uh, you can find this on YouTube if you're interested to, to, to look it up. But he has this beautiful uh, idea of putting under the statue uh, petitions he has received, requests for prayer and also any thorny problems he's dealing with. So it must be a massive pile of papers underneath the statue at the moment. But uh, he does that 
because he really believes that St Joseph looks after things. And uh, the Rosary Group in Burnham very kindly uh, sent me when I came here first back in March this beautiful image of St Joseph asleep. You can see there are no petitions under it at the moment. The Bishop of Northampton's got nothing to worry him. That's because St Joseph deals with these things so quickly. Um, but I, 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 I jest, of course, but um, we should have a, a, a sense of humour when we think about these things too. But there's St Joseph asleep. Just think about that for a moment. Asleep. He's not in control. We're not in control when we're asleep, are we? And yet there's St Joseph hearing God's word and responding to that word when he woke up. I just find that so powerful and I want to share it with you. You know, sometimes we feel so powerless, don't we? We think I can't sort everything out that I want to deal with in my life, never mind in the world around me. And yet there's this beautiful image of a wonderful saint to help us. So Joseph, pray for us. And in this coming year, may we really imbibe the depth of your beautiful love for God, your wonderful trust in God, and your openness to God's will. Amen.